Here in Pittsburgh, we don't have to worry about getting fresh water. That's because our region is water rich. There's a mile of water for every square mile of land. But in other parts of the world, places like Africa, India, Haiti, the Middle East, there is none. But what's happening on this rooftop in Newcastle could change the way drinking water is delivered to the most remote places. We're working on some proposals for governments in the Middle East and North Africa that want 300 dish system. Three dishes produces what? Three dishes uh, can produce up to about 500 gallons a day. That's 500 gallons of water fit to drink. These reflective parabolic dishes, along with a distiller, can purify water, fresh or salt water, from rivers and oceans anywhere in the world. It's the invention of Tom Joseph, a mechanical engineer out of Newcastle. If you ever burned a piece of paper with a magnifying glass, uh, all you're doing is you're taking the sunlight and focusing it all down to one little point. And at that point, uh, you've intensified the sunlight by anywhere between 100 and 400 to 1. Uh, and when you do that, the, the light is so intense, it can generate heat up to about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're doing the same thing except we're using a satellite dish as the concentrator. The sunlight hits the dish and reflects back to a point. And at that point, we get really, really intense sunlight. When that light hits a black surface, it turns to heat. And then we use that heat to heat water. It generates steam, and then the steam recondenses, and that's clean water. It's almost like a whiskey still, except for water. At first, Tom was trying to find a way to build an electrical generator using concentrated solar energy. But after seeing a PBS special on scarcity of clean water in the world, Tom changed focus. When I saw the special, I said, well, I wonder if we could use the excess power from this power generator, the excess heat, to somehow purify some water. And then I did a little more research, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, why don't we just use all of the heat to purify water and just eliminate the power generation for now? Because power won't do you any good if you're dying of waterborne illness. Tom built a prototype, and it worked. Epiphany Solar Water Systems is up and running. Now Tom's crew is busy getting ready to hit the markets. Increasingly, everybody needs it. Uh, Ron Pettengill is right Epiphany's now, CEO. He says in developing countries, 50% of the water sources are contaminated. Foul water is a huge problem, both socially and economically. It takes energy to produce fresh water. The, the, the more and more that the fresh water stocks in the world diminish, the more energy is required to take seawater and turn it into fresh water. So what we've done here at Epiphany is really come up with a solution that uses um, readily available energy, which is the sun, right, use that to then be able to desalinate water, turn it into fresh water, right, which allows, A, is, is in, it's, it's cheap, it's, on, one, on one hand, it's, it's less expensive, but also it's, it's, it's sustainable. We're not using petroleum. Is this energy system cheaper? It's about on par with the best current water purification technologies, water, water desalination technologies. So we can take ocean water, make it into clean water for about the same price as it's currently done with conventional energy sources, petroleum or, or uh, coal sources. But more importantly, is it's alternative energy powered. So no, it's the same price, but we don't have any of the environmental impact. It's clean. It's absolutely 100% sustainable. Not only sustainable, but the system is easy to set up and made with off-the-shelf components. Any satellite dish, common industrial tubing, and a standard water distiller. So it won't be a big deal to have people in Haiti, people in African countries, just to go boom, 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 boom for setup. That's right. Our design logic is that a bicycle mechanic in India needs to be able to set the system up and keep it running. Think about what we're doing here, right? When you, when you install one of our systems, we don't hook into the grid. That's what sustainable means. We're making our own energy. So that example I cited before in Oman, right, these are remote villages. I don't need to put in electrical infrastructure. We go, we set it up, we use the sunshine to do the distillation. They're self-sustaining. And when the sun doesn't shine, Epiphany's got that covered too. It's a hybrid system designed to automatically switch over to electricity. Currently in the Middle East, the Persian Gulf area, 95% of the water comes from the sea. To make it drinkable, it's desalinated by reverse osmosis, a process that removes the impurities by using high pressure, pushing the salt water through a very fine filter. It's a process that takes a lot of energy. 
but every time you build a reverse osmosis plant, you also need to build a, an electricity generating plant right next to it. So uh, currently their cost of water delivered to an end user is somewhere around a nickel a gallon. Uh, we could do it on a small scale and already be better than that economically and we can do it without the need for conventional power sources. While the Middle East may not have natural fresh water, it does get plenty of sunshine. So when Epiphany was ready to introduce their solar water system, they went to the desert, the World Future Energy Conference in Abu Dhabi. We went there expressly with the purpose to validate our concept, which we did. I mean, we were really, really, I mean, we were delighted. We had huge traffic. Um, we had uh, two TV stations, uh, Arab news language TV stations covered us. We also made the front page of uh, the English Daily uh, in, the, in the United Arab Emirates. And what was interesting about that was, you know, everybody loved it because of the simplicity of the design. A simplicity that can bring fresh water to those who need it. Whether you believe in global warming or not doesn't really matter. What matters is using fossil fuels is not sustainable. And we have the sun, we have a whole range of things that we can look to. I think the sun using solar power, uh, especially in the form of concentrated solar power, is, is one of the most efficient and the easiest, ones to, the easiest uh, source to use. We need to look at that to answer our future, future energy demands.